everyone wants and expects to live in a community with highly trained police officers and firefighters. And there is a growing trend nationwide to cross-train staff as both police officers and firefighters. More than 130 communities across the country have transitioned to a public safety model to ensure they have the staff required for both police and fire protection. So I think a lot of us realized after 9-11 and the terrorist attacks and the need for police, fire, and EMS to all work together during an emergency, that, it's, that there's value in having these agencies work together to be able to respond to real world emergencies. And we have found especially that when we have our command staff that's working together and our line staff that are actually dealing with the emergency, that we're able to serve the community much better than we had prior to being cross-trained. For the past two decades, Cedar Falls local government has operated one of the lowest per capita property tax rates among the 20 largest cities in Iowa. Cedar Falls has the third lowest rate in the state at a cost of just under $450 per person, substantially below the state average rate of just over $600 per person. And the first thing you want to be able to do is to provide the service that you need. You know, make sure you can respond to the calls and, and do the job you need to do. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's job one. Uh, but you also want to do it as efficiently as you can. Um, you, you want to be a good steward of the taxpayer's money, so you want to look at that aspect too. You know, it's, it's easy just to hire a whole bunch of people and throw a whole bunch of people at the problem. Um, but, but the, you know, the good department, the efficient department, is the one that's going to use those people efficiently with the least amount of downtime. Cedar Falls began cross-training police officers and firefighters back in 2005 as a way to reduce that downtime and make the most of its resources. And if you have people that, that can do two jobs in one, uh, you have less people standing by and you have more people. You may have 30 full-time firefighters, but if you have 15 police officers cross-trained, you have 45 people now available to respond to a fire. Or if you have some of those firefighters and do policing duties, you'll have more people that are able to respond to that policing when needed. Cedar Falls Public Safety Director Jeff Olson recently traveled with staff to Woodbury, Minnesota to see how they have been serving their community with cross-trained public safety staff since 1995. But we know there's a lot of other ideas that maybe we haven't uh, thought of or there's uh, problems that other departments have solved. So as we make phone calls or make visits, there's a lot that we learn different directions we can go or ways we can make our program even better. Woodbury, Minnesota has a population of nearly 68,000 people compared to just over 40,000 residents in Cedar Falls. Geographically, Woodbury covers just over 35 and a half square miles, which is just slightly larger than Cedar Falls. Woodbury has many retail areas which contribute to the growth and development, and with those retail areas comes the need for public protection through police, fire, and EMS. Woodbury covers the city with just 12 full-time firefighters, 80 part-time firefighters, 70 police, and 12 cross-trained police fire staff. So for us, it's just kind of how we do business, and it's, I think, what our community expects. Cedar Falls has 28 full-time firefighters and four part-time firefighters. Twelve police officers are cross-trained as firefighters, with an additional 10 police officers scheduled to be cross-trained certified in the spring of 2018. At that time, 54 people will be available to respond to fire calls citywide, led by the 28 full-time firefighters. The main goal of the of the cross-trained staff is to get more people on scene to provide a better service to our community and we're trying to make best use of those resources the city has given us by using a person who is able to do perform two jobs instead of one. On the police side, Cedar Falls has 42 full-time police officers and 10 reserve police officers of which three are firefighters cross-trained as police reserves. Public safety leaders in both Woodbury, Minnesota and Cedar Falls, Iowa agree that by cross-training staff to serve in dual capacities, the cities actually have more protection for both police and fire calls. On the other hand, there's probably people in the community that have no idea that this is how we do business because when people show up and we're fighting a fire, they don't know who's the cop and who's the full-time and who's the paid on call. They're all just firefighters and they're all working together, um, which I guess for us is kind of a good test is the fact that it's working. So, uh, but it's always been very positive. It's something we're very proud of and, and uh, it's kind of a hallmark of our agency because it's really just who we are. In some recent fire calls, instead of having six firefighters respond to a call, as many as 13 trained staff responded within minutes to a fire call. What we're doing is we're offering 
um, firefighters at times that we need them um, to supplement the five or six firefighters that we have in the fire stations. Um, and so we're actually gonna end up with more personnel on scene at an emergency incident than we've ever had before. The thing that's most obvious is the, the early number of people available that police officers who are on patrol or working at the police station or at the schools can, uh, can mass the resources at the fire scene and help in those critical early minutes at a fire scene and provide, uh, you know, provide uh, you know, bodies to help the firemen working there. And that tells you that the program's working because you have more people at the scene and it's at the same or less cost than what we've had in the past. So that tells you a lot. Cedar Falls is different from Woodbury in that emergency medical services, or EMS, is provided by local hospitals in the Cedar Valley rather than by the police or fire department. Uh, so our Tory runs our EMS, so we don't have those high volume of EMS calls for city employees, although they, uh, there are fire and police calls where we'll respond to assist with EMS calls. Making that initial transition from police and fire to cross-train public safety takes time. In Woodbury, Police fire personnel train routinely with the full-time firefighters, and that brings everyone together. In fact, anytime we have a fire training event, the police firefighters are with us, and anytime we have a live burn, they're with us as well. Anytime there is a fire, uh, they're on scene. So the, the confidence now is 100%. So we've grown to completely trust in them. Uh, they know exactly what we're going to expect, and, and we know exactly what uh, they're going to expect. When we're working in the community, it really is seamless. They don't pay attention to which patch is on the shoulder of the uniform. All they want to know is that someone is there to help them with whatever that emergency is that they're experiencing. And because our police officers put on firefighting gear, uh, most of our residents wouldn't even know that they are police officers when they're assisting with the fire. As police officers train together with firefighters, that trust and teamwork increases over time. Obviously, the more you train together, the more you work together, you take the small calls together. Um, when the bigger calls come, uh, which we always know are gonna happen, uh, it's just a, definitely a better, higher performing team. So that's taken time, but it's been a big payoff for us. Police are routinely out on patrol. So when a fire call comes in, they are often the first to arrive on a fire scene, minutes ahead of firefighters and the fire trucks. Well, one of the obvious ways that it helps is that the police officers are on patrol 24 hours a day. They can often be first to a fire scene and, and size up what's going on and report back what they see. So when we arrive on scene, we can have that 10 second face to face conversation with the police firefighter and he'll tell us exactly what they found and they'll just join our crew. So we're, uh, you know, again, no, no longer or never entering a, a situation light. We've always got a full crew. And we have them work together when there's a real emergency and our community really gains from that sort of philosophy in that we can get the right number of people to their emergency uh, to help them on their worst day. That's the exact scenario which happened in February of 2016 when police and fire crews responded to a trailer fire on the west side of Cedar Falls. Three family members were trapped inside. Police arrived first and were able to determine where the family members were inside the burning structure. Um, they were able to quickly assess the situation. Back of the house, one adult, two kids. Heard them screaming. All right. Um, they sprayed one of the compressed air foam systems <laughs> onto the fire, which actually knocked the fire down. And um, they knew where the people were located inside of that building because they'd been talking to them through the trailer walls. Can you hear us? Um, when the firefighters arrived, they could communicate that information to them. They, because of the compressed air foam, they had knocked the fire down and given those firefighters a better chance of getting in there and helping those people to survive that experience. As a result of the quick response and teamwork of the firefighters and cross-trained police staff, a family of three was rescued from the burning home, averting a tragedy. Yeah, you know, personalities aside, uh, down the road here, you're not going to know who's on which department because everybody's going to be there with the same goal in mind, and that's to deal with the incident. Cedar Falls public safety leaders plan to have 22 people cross-trained as police fire by the spring of 2018. And as the city continues to train more and more staff to cross over, depending upon the emergency, the residents benefit from better service and lower overall costs.
public safety uh, by its nature has a lot of downtime and how can you um, make better use of people's time and, and the taxpayers dollars and have less downtime but yet provide a better maybe a better level of service and that's what we're finding out some of these communities are doing they're actually providing better service at a more affordable cost we don't lose sight of what it is that we come to work every day to do and that's to provide a really high level of service for our community if we're doing that then we're doing the right thing cross training is the key it's it's just like i say it's who we are it's how we've done business now for over 20 years uh, it just feels comfortable to us and um there's a lot of benefits to, to taking that leap and doing it in this way. For the same dollar amount, you have more people available to respond to different types of calls because they have that cross-trained ability. And with that cross-trained ability, the community wins.